Everybody, uh, welcome to Nervous Rex. I'm sitting here with the lovely and talented lady of leisure, Dillard <laughs> Glenn, with two N's. Two N's. Cheers. Not. One, what? Two. Yeah. Yeah. Takes two N's to tango. I have an amazing guest on this week named Ciara Lynch. She's a humiliatrix. Which I didn't know that you could get paid for this. Do you know what a humiliatrix is? You could probably put it together. Yeah, she gets paid to like pee on men and stuff. Yeah, I think even further, that seems like an easy one. She does a lot of talented things. Uh, she does champagne enemas at Burning oh. Man and elsewhere. Um, I haven't seen it in person, but this year at Burning Man, she came by to do it for us. And last year, she did it on the roof of her RV. She's from Portland. She's beautiful, very intelligent, and she gets paid to humiliate people. And she's uh, amazing. It's a cool story. Well, what does she charge? Does she charge by the hour or by the trick? I don't really remember. We, I think she explains it on this episode, but she, I don't think she got into the details. It's kind of tacky. Like, how much do you make a year? You don't say yeah, that or ask that. That is true. I just didn't know what it would cost to get that done. And like, who do you, where do you find that? Craigslist? Do we advertise? Word of mouth? I think, uh, I'm sure she just has a few regular clients, but she also has a following, a fan following online. And she, she makes an honest living by humiliating men doing interesting things. And I'm fascinated with that kind of stuff yeah. because I would do that if I had clients that would say, will you just slap? me with your you know your the back of your knee or some weird fetish I, yeah. well that'd be a weird angle but yeah but, i mean yeah. i feel like you'd break a jaw yeah a, a what a jaw uh, what's that jaw your jaw oh, a jaw oh, no that's a southern thing <laughs> a j-a-w a jaw and my vowels are weird okay 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 jaw how do you uh, say it? jaw jaw yeah it's a, so who's right <laughs> and who's wrong because who's correct in a slang i mean a uh, accent i think Nobody's right. People always say to me, you have a funny accent when I travel around the world. I'm like, no, you have an accent. But in my brain, I have no accent. I no. sound very clear and clean in California. Well, you have a pretty sta it's a standard American accent. That's what you learn when you come to L.A. Very boring. Yeah, I leaned into mine. Yeah, no, you and you're never going to lose it, I don't feel. No, my father would be way too upset. It's like my identity. Yeah. No, that's well, it's 92% of the reason you're on the show is your accent. That might be true. Right. Well, British people don't lose their accent when they come here. It's true. And if they do, they're considered a traitor of sorts. It's true. Right. So what have you been up to in your world being a lady of leisure? LOL. Yeah, I mean, it's National Champagne Day. Really? Yeah. So what does that mean? You drink champagne, and, and this guest does champagne enemas. What I mean, that's pretty exciting. That kind of yeah. feels in my wheelhouse. I feel like it's a waste of the bubble. Right. But well, you then, get more drunk. Yeah. Have you ever done an enema at all? No. What about a... I did a coffee enema once. What? Where Why? they put coffee up your butt. No, I know what that is. To, like, clean out your system? No, I... Okay, so I went hunting in Hawaii, and then the next day I got a coffee enema. So I went from polar extreme, like, man, handling meat and killing a pig, and then, and then the next day I was folded up like a baby taco with a thing in my butt. It was my friend's mom did it, and she's a no. Hawaiian mom. And she put the thing up my butt and put coffee in my butt. Local grown Hawaiian coffee in my butthole. I cannot. Yeah, it was very humbling. I feel like coffee kind of cleared out already. This is right to the source, baby. Oh, oh. Yeah. And I started saying bebe instead of baby. I used to say, yeah, baby. Now it's bebe. B-E-H-B-E-H. -E -E like it's like when little kids go, yeah, bebe. I like that phonetic spelling. Yeah. So now it's, I'm going to start running with bebe. Okay. Keep you, trying that out. Do you have slang? Like, um, what's some of your lingo with your friends? Do you have like a thing like, well, oh, hush, you puppy? I say honey a lot. Oh, honey's good. But that's also because I can't remember people's names. Mm. I do that. I know. And that makes me selfish. And I am pretty self-involved. But when I'm... I'm used to saying my name and right. then people look confused and then I spell it right. and then they're like, what? Okay. And it's a whole thing. So I don't listen to other people's names. Would you rather, uh, anytime you sneeze, an innocent child dies and a photo of that child gets texted to you on your phone or cut your dad's dick off and throw it at dinner at a Thanksgiving dinner at the whole family's face? The former. I just, the former. I, yes. I would rather a bunch of children. I don't. I've got a weird relationship. Wait, with the my former father. or the that, that means you cut your dad's dick off. No, the oh, former is first? the children. Oh, I thought former was second, like no, prior former, than former. Ladder. Ladder. Huh? So you would not cut your dad's dick no. off? Oh man, you're gonna kill all those kids. Yes. That's horrible. You're I not know. a good person. Well, I'm not a good person, and I'm like incredibly loyal to my family. Right. Lo like, lo lo loyal. Loyal. Yeah. Loyal. <laughs> now, okay, I bet your dad has a big dick. He seems like he's got... I don't know. <laughs> I just could just tell by the way you are as a person that you came out a big dick <laughs> because you have confidence and a swag. And it's not... A, I'm not racist. It's not that. It's that... Uh, he has a big dick because he's from North Carolina. He's from North Carolina. Yeah. He doesn't have to watch this episode. 
No, okay. I don't think he would. <laughs> yeah, he, I just feel I he has think a big he wants dick. to know what I'm doing out here. Do you think that you can tell by looking at a dude if he's got a big dick by his nose or his clothes or his energy? No, okay, because I hmm. used to date someone a long time ago that had tiny hands and feet, like the same. I have big hands, right. and he had the same size hands as me, and the same, and it was not did not. He had that. a big dick, huge dick. Was he white? Yes. Okay. And I've never only been with white guys. Oh, so you're racist? No, <laughs> no, I have I'm a just type. Kidding. You go tie, type. tie, tie men. Oh, type. Okay, so you don't have a type. Women, just all shapes and colors. I don't discriminate. I'm not racist, but I prefer <laughs> women of European, South American, North American descent. Like the darker skin. Sometimes, but just yeah, I. I don't know. I don't. I go to Asia, and I'm not really attracted to the local fanfare. Mm-hmm. I go to Europe. Beautiful women. Um, it's interesting. I question my racism because I, I, but does that mean I'm racist or I have a no, type? No, I just think nowadays, it's your descent. Like what gets you going? Right. Like some people get going with champagne enemas. Yeah. It's yeah. Or coffee enemas, which I didn't really like, but it stirred up the pot. Stars. <laughs> it was a star. It wasn't Starbucks, which probably would have yeah, been not. Because you want to go, if you're going to do ca- a, a enema with coffee, do a good local ground is what I say. I don't think I'm ever going to do it's that. Okay, I think I'm to. just going to live my life. Orally. Yes. So this episode is with Ciara Lynch. I think her name's amazing, and she's a wonderful woman, and uh, I can't wait for you to learn more with me about what she does for a living. I mean, sign me up. Yeah, so I I say let's just roll right into this one, and and viewers and listeners, please enjoy the lovely and talented and humiliatrixy Ciara Lynch. Hmm. Ciara Lynch, welcome to Nervous Rex. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm a little uh, going through coffee withdrawals, but as you just told me, tea, which I have, is still caffeine. <laughs> so the debate is out. I feel just a little, and I'm on antibiotics. Yeah. So I'm just already letting you know I'm a little funky today. That's all right. Yeah. And you had your coffee. Yes, I've had a lot of coffee today. You seem very... You seem oh, you you have a very um, calm demeanor at all times. Have you been told that before? You're very cool. Yeah, I'm, yeah, my baseline's pretty chill. You because we were at, we met at Burning Man, mm-hmm. and we had a great time. Mm-hmm. And throughout the whole night, I just your energy was very calming and chill. And we had a very chill. If, if it's if it's possible to understand, we had a chill night at Burning Man. <laughs> we did where we went out and went to a jazz club. Mm-hmm. And all these things. And uh, your energy is very uh, mellow, which I need to be around because I'm very nervous, Rex. Yeah. So it's nice to be around calm energy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I need lots of coffee because otherwise I am kind of more on the lower, right. you know, right. more laid back and falling asleep on the couch. So let's get into it. People listening, um, you are a humiliatrix. Is that a, is that because I love just the name alone <laughs> and I didn't even know that was a thing until we met. Uh-huh. Um, how did that come about and explain what a humiliatrix is? Okay. So a humiliatrix is like a dominatrix, mm-hmm. but instead of like whipping men with floggers or, you know, spanking them over a bench, I use my words and I humiliate them verbally and I work entirely online. So I don't have a dungeon or anything like that. I just do webcam shows and custom videos and I talk to guys per minute on the phone. And so, yeah, that's what I do. And how I got started was that's a pretty fun story. Um, I was 17 years old and I was living in Japan as an exchange student. Hot. Yeah. And I didn't know any Japanese, and I didn't know anyone that spoke English, so I was really lonely and bored, and I spent a lot of time online. And I would just talk to friends, I would talk to strangers, and it was just like the only way I could socialize, really, because I was, you know, just didn't know the language. And one day this guy, who just saw a picture of me on some social networking site at the time, thought I was cute, started, uh, started up a conversation with me. And he was a big pervert, and he was really into getting peed on. A pervert online? Yeah, weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> Targeting some random 17-year-old girl on the internet? Go figure. So he, we would talk, and I was kind of like, I was like grossed out by him, but also curious. And also it was like, you know, there's no harm in talking to someone online. Um, but he would always try to get me to meet him in real life and wanted me to like pee on him and all this. 
And I was young, but I wasn't that stupid. So I was like, no, I'm not going to meet you. Was this a Japanese man in Japan? No, no. So a lot of people think that, but um, he was just in New York. That wasn't racist. I was just assuming. Okay. <laughs> no, people think like, oh, you're in Japan getting peed right, on some right, Japanese right. businessman. Right. No, no, no. It was just some guy in New York. And eventually he came to terms with the fact that I wasn't going to meet him. And so he said, well, all right, I know you're not going to meet me, but your piss should be bottled and sold. And Of course. Of course, right? And I was like, I thought he was just, you know, kind of talking. And But I was like, all right, well, let's see where this conversation goes. And I was like, all right, I'll sell, I'll sell you a bottle of my pee. And we negotiated a price. And he wanted me to send the bottle first before he sent payment, which I was thinking like, okay, this guy's going to rip me off. Right. But what am I really losing? What you, yeah, right, right, exactly. What are you losing? <laughs> so let's see what happens. And I sent him a bottle of my urine. And then like two weeks later, he sent me $250 in the mail. Bingo. Yeah, I know. And you know, that I was like 17. That was more money oh, yeah. than I've ever had in my life. And that's the easiest money you'd ever made at yeah, that point. Yeah. Yeah. And so it all kind of stemmed from there. It was a big light bulb moment. And I was like, all right, this guy found me by accident. What would happen if I went looking for guys like right. this online and did some research and found a website that's kind of like eBay. It's an auction site, mm -hmm. except it's women selling like their P used P -Bay? panties. <laughs> Sorry, that was easy. <laughs> it's called eBand because yeah. it's for all the, the auctions that are banned on okay. eBay. So it's like women's used underwear, mm. socks, shoes, that sort of thing. And so I started selling on there and it all kind of grew from there. I, I was just kind of this like panty seller for a while. And then I found out how to um, open up my own phone lines where I get paid per minute. So it was like phone sex. But since I kind of came into the adult industry in this more fetish way, the guys that would call me were usually like really submissive and like to be talked down to. And so that kind of developed this like cyber dominatrix persona right. and then did like cam shows from there and videos. And so, what, so, so and I imagine as a beautiful young woman, it's it's you feel a lot safer to not having to meet these men because that's always got to be a scary thing. I would imagine is like breaking that fourth wall and meeting this person in person. Mm -hmm. But they feel connected to you because you're looking down the camera, you're talking to them. They feel like they know you, but you never meet these guys in your whole life. Yeah. Um, it, you kind of came into a great lane. That seems like the best hustle ever a pretty girl could do. Yeah. And I guess obviously you're a sexually open minded person. This mm -hmm. is something that some, you know, some insecure, you know, sexually uptight girls might not be into. W where did you grow up that you have such an open minded, free spirit? Because I feel like most American, North American women aren't that free. Oh, where, where are you from? I am from the Pacific Northwest. Uh huh. So grew well, up that in... makes sense. Portland area. Yeah, Portland area. There's um, something going on little, up there in Portland. That's magical. Weird. Yeah, I like. <laughs> yeah, weird's good. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure what it is because I grew up really religious. Maybe that is ah, why. That's why. I was repressed. They're rebelling. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up Jehovah Witness, um, which my folks were up until I was about the age of eight and then they left the religion. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about Jehovah Witness, it's kind of cult-like. They really right. kind of keep their people in and to leave is a big deal. You get shunned by the rest of your family members. So it was kind of a big deal when my parents left for like in terms of their relationships with their parents. But I was so young, like, you know, I just kind of did what they did. So I've always kind of had a good immediate family for that reason. Um, but I don't know. I've always been just kind of curious sexually. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Dan Savage. Yeah. Yeah. I've been like reading his column and his and his podcast since I was like 14 years old. Okay. And I've always been like really intrigued by weird fetishes and, you know, just kind of the spectrum of sexuality and different ways it manifests. Right. I think it's really cool. Yeah. And there's so many, you know, it's funny. I always say like, I, I guess I'm kind of boring because I don't have any crazy fetishes, but I know there's so many out there. Like I looked at your Instagram and I imagine there's a lot of foot fetish. That's like a pretty common one is right. a foot fetish. Right. And then of course you have your, the peeing and all these other ones. Um, what are some of the more random ones that you would get approached about? Or maybe what's something that's too out of bounds for you to say, Oh, you know what? That's not my thing. And, uh, is there any like too creepy a thing that comes your way that, um, you know, I've always kind of liked the more darker fantasies that guys have. And I've always kind of figured that, you know, because it's just me talking, nothing's too taboo, you know, because I don't think I don't feel like there's any harm in right. talking about whatever. Um, so I've gone some pretty dark directions. I've had guys that, you know, wanted me to talk about castrating them and killing them and blackmailing them and all sorts of really 
dark places. Um, one of the more weirder ones that comes to mind, this is a fun one. Um, <laughs> this is like a multi-layered like fetish this Please, guy has. Uh, I'm all ears. So he came to me on webcam and at first he, he just told me he had what's called a giantess fetish. And what that is, is a guy that has, it's a, it's kind of a tragic fetish cause it can't really be realized. It's a guy that has a fetish for like a giant woman, not like a big woman, but like a, like attack of the 50 foot woman type. Oh, wow. Like, so it's either a fantasy of them being shrunk down really small, uh-huh. or it's just a fantasy of some like Godzilla, like woman coming through a city and just like, so this is a real things. thing. This exists. Yeah. So typically how the fantasy goes, it's like, it's this woman and she's tall and she, I guess you just feel very vulnerable, you mm-hmm. know, as like a little small person. Right. And typically the giant woman like crushes you or swallows you or sits on you or, you know, something to that effect. And so what I did for that is pretty simple. I just put my webcam on the ground and angled it upwards. Ah, right. So like, you appeared like a giant. Yeah. So that was just the first part of his fantasy is like he went, he had this giantess fantasy. And then he wanted me to not only be a giant, but to pretend to be his mom mm. And when it comes to incest fantasies, usually it's not like, it's usually the idea of your mother or your sister. It's not your actual mother or sister, you know, but this guy actually wanted me to be his mom so much so that he wanted me to, um, use his mom's name and Mm. talk in the, what is it? The third person where you use your own name Uh, or is it the first person? I always get that mixed up. uh, 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 Third person. Something like that. I I would be like, Oh, Mrs. Smith is very mad at you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the third person. Yeah. (laughs) And so I was praying to his mom. I punished him, shrunk him down very small. And then on top of that, he had a fetish for the backs of knees. So I was punishing him. I relate him. to that. Really? I'm a back of the knee guy. Maybe that's my fetish. There you go. I don't know why I'm a back of the knee guy. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I think we just figured out my fetish. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I would like, I would pretend like I punished him and shrunk him down. And then I picked him up and made him worship the backs of my you're knees. Like it's a as little kid, you're like a kid playing yeah. in an adult fantasy world. Well, I this think sounds a lot like of fun. A lot of fetishes are like that, aren't they? It's yeah. like cops and be, robbers with your pants down. Well, I guess a lot of stuff stems from childhood. Either, you know, there's so much stuff we walk around that we don't realize suppress childhood issues that we haven't resolved. So yeah. that actually makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously the mom thing, that's a pretty common one. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, end up marrying their mom, basically, or being attracted to, yeah. you know, somebody like their mother. Um, so, yeah, so that one, that's a, biz- I guess, I wouldn't even know if that's necessarily that bizarre. Um, that was the first time I ran to someone that specifically wanted me to use its mom's name. Wow, Usually yeah. it's just like, I'm your sister, I'm your mom. And it's, th- they're not actually thinking about actual family members, so just the taboo of a relative. So you've never had to have physical contact, like step on a dude's balls or anything like that? No. Yeah, because I feel like that's like a common cliche when you hear is like, step, you know, step on my nut, treat me like shit. Like you see that in a lot of the movies and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, now, when you're doing the webcam, is it a two way thing where you see them as well and get to uh, interact with them? Or are they, is it is it just a voyeuristic thing where they're just watching you? Or do you have a relationship where you see them as well? It depends on what if they want to turn their cam on or not. Got it. Yeah, and often do they? Is that a common thing uh, or do they want to be anonymous? Or I would say probably like 60, 40 more often. They just it's anonymous. OK. Yeah. Or like even if um, they do turn their camera on, it's usually just at their dick. So, oh, that's that's too easy. <laughs> that's too easy. Yeah. There's no mystery to that. Um, yeah, and I gotta say, like, I'm so used to do everything online in this detached sort of way right. that on the rare occasions that a guy does turn on his cam and it's at his face, like, I kind of get a little like, oh shit, this is real. Whoa, yeah, yeah. you're like looking in their eyes and seeing you're having a connection yeah. with this human being, like they're real. It's a different. Experience. It must be easier to almost disconnect and not see who they are, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and and where are most of are these mostly North North American businessmen? Are these rich guys that are miserable in their marriage? Is it like where did, where does most of this come from? You know, I don't, I don't think there's a common thread. No, you know, just men, just pig. I mean, certainly men. Yeah. There's definitely married men, young men, old men, you know, I, 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 guys from all over the world, um, international horny, creepy pigs. I don't think that, um, pig men have any boundaries of uh, countries. I think men are just pigs. (laughs) True. Some places more than others. Mm -hmm. Um, and is it, do you actually, I mean, I'm sure you do, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. Is this a vocation for you? Do you enjoy, like, do you have fun doing this? Or sometimes is it like, oh, I got to punch in the clock today and fucking treat this dude like shit. Or is it usually easy for you to tap in and have fun with this? 
it's a, it's a grind. I mean, I yeah. have like almost 2000 videos at this point. I've been doing it over 10 years. So it, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. It feels like a grind sometimes. You still but I, look 17 years old. Oh, thank you. No, you really look really young. You either did the right drugs. <laughs> you either stay. Oh, I know why. I just figured out. What's that? Portland. You're not in the sun. Mm, that helps. Because it's cloudy 300 days a year there. Yeah. The, it's a depressing weather pattern. Lots of moisture with the rain. Yeah, yeah. for real. It preserved you. Yeah. Uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. So you're staying in Portland. You work from Portland, obviously, mm-hmm. out of your own place, which is another. You don't have to move to L.A. and do all mm-hmm. this whole L.A. grind, but you just can come here once in a while. Mm-hmm. Ha- uh, and you come here and do your podcast, which is called Standard Deviation. And how? And, and is that you and your roommate? You said. Yeah, yeah. It's my roommate Kevin, and it's mostly um, most of the episodes are just me and him talking tangentially and like just different you know current events politics right. um philosophy drugs oh, cool. sex you know Ooh, i like it. it sounds like what i like to talk about yeah so, so like to i'm go gonna be a guest on so when i do your podcast it'll be with you guys yeah oh cool yeah yeah um we let's go in, into our burning man story which i know a lot of listeners because night you gotta imagine 99 percent of the people listening are like another fucking burning man story but <laughs> we have a cool one in that we we um did we meet at Burning Man? Yeah. We, we met at Burning yeah, we Man. Met at we Burning stayed Man. at the same camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, our, our trailers were next to each other. Yeah. Um, I thought you were just a cool chick right off the bat, and uh, I didn't see it, but you did the champagne enema on the roof. I did, yeah. So tell people about a champagne, champagne enema, because people don't... I tell people about you, and they're like, no, she didn't. No, she... I'm like, no, if I didn't see it, then I didn't happen. No, tell, let's explain a champagne enema. We've got video evidence of it. Oh, do we? So, yeah. Run that clip. <laughs> um, it's exactly what it sounds like. You stick an enema bag in your ass, and you take champagne into it. And I don't know exactly how it works, but... Uh, with water enemas, obviously you flush it back out. Mm-hmm. But with champagne, um, dry champagne specifically, your body just absorbs it. So, you, so like anything, like a suppository, you can put drugs in your ass and get high. I guess alcohol as well. Do you yeah. get more? Do you get like more drunk off of champagne in your asshole? I feel like you get drunker faster, and you get not drunk faster too. Mm. Like it's like it's really quick peak, and then. It feels like it's gone pretty quickly as oh, well. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Maybe this burn, I'll try it. You should. I mean, I want, you know, I was a little <laughs> conservative. I did get butt naked at Burning Man and whipped my dick out and I stood on a corner. I'm like, we're at Burning Man. I'm doing it. And I stood on a corner, pulled my pants down and screamed at the top of my lungs at center camp and wagged my dick back and forth. <laughs> and nobody even batted an eyelash. They're like, oh, first timer, you know? And, uh, so I want to this year get a little crazier. And I think I'm just going to fully take like a one hour naked walk around. Mm. You know, I need to let, I, it, it's interesting what happens at Burning Man. You really go through these personal sort of ego barriers that you got to break down about what you're obviously a lot more uninhibited than mm-hmm. most. It's safe to say. So for you, that's not maybe as big of a deal. But for somebody like me, I'm so conditioned yeah. that I was still reserved and kind of holding back and taking it all in. Um, I don't know if I'm ready for a champagne enema. Maybe mm. a tequila shot enema. I don't know. Mm, you I, ever done any other alcohol in your butt? No, because I've heard it's re- it's actually pretty dangerous, especially when you get into Ooh, risky like, one. Yeah. Well, when you get into like hard liquor, um, it's pretty easy to get alcohol poisoning. But got it. For whatever reason, specifically dry champagne, you can take in a lot more. And is this a daily activity? <laughs> no. Like when you how many how often could you do it there? Um. What do you mean? I mean, uh, the champagne enema. Did you do it like once per burn? Like- oh, I did it, I think, twice last year. And then it's usually something I do on my birthday. Mm, happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. When is your birthday? Um, It was just a couple weeks ago, July 22nd. Oh, yeah. I'm July 22nd. So you're on the Leo cusp. That's you're, right. So you are Leo by one day. Mm-hmm. Do you feel you have can't? Do you believe in astrology? No. I don't. Okay. So let's talk about this. No. I don't know fucking what to believe because there's some character traits that make sense about me being a cancer that are like, oh, that makes sense. But I feel like it's a very, like, here's my argument argument like scientifically okay so those charts were written in ancient greece or even before then i believe that uh the constellation of the stars that created a crab to them they can connect to the stars and crab so therefore if you're born under that sign you are crabby and you're hard on the outside and soft on the inside right. and all the character traits of a crab but since then the earth's axis has shifted and there's no longer does that chart apply so it doesn't yeah. they, they broke it down i saw in one of these shows they're like oh actually now if you're born under that sign you're not really a cancer anymore because that chart was written 5,000 years ago or whatever. So part of me thinks it's all bullshit, but then sometimes I will have dated girls that are a Virgo or whatever there were, where some chemistries don't match. So I don't know what to believe. Mm. I, as I get older, I realize I don't know anything and maybe I'm wrong and maybe there's some truth to it, but I don't know. I just, 
I don't know if I believe it. I want to believe it, but I yeah. don't. It's cool. It's nice to feel oh, like yeah. you're a part of a crab tribe or a lion tribe. So you're lion more than crab? I don't know. I actually don't really relate to either of them. Because really? like, I know the cancers are really sensitive and I'm not What's really sensitive. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> and the Leos are just like really um, kind of gre- gregacious and like extroverted. Um, and I'm not really that either. So I think, well, I think the thing about astrology is they keep it just vague enough that anyone could be like, ooh, yeah, that's, that's what me, I'm saying. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. It's fun to think about, but I don't know if I believe it. Uh, uh, I want to believe it, though. So you have a very equanimous, calm demeanor. I wish I could be more like you. I work very hard yeah. at being more chilled out. It's just the way I'm wired and the way my brain works. I'm very neurotic. Mm-hmm. Nervous Rex is the name of the show. I'm working on my breathing and slowing down. And you just have this, what's the word? You're at this like... You're right there on your baseline, like you said, is very calm. Yeah. What gets you rattled? Is anything pissed? Like I don't. I can't imagine you getting pissed. Are you one of those people that when you do get pissed off, you're gonna you're gonna explode and like <laughs> murder everybody? Or what, what, how do you get mad? I don't think so. I'm probably more of like a like I seethe internally yeah. and keep it inside a little bit, but not to the point where I like explode. It's usually okay. something like I. You know, if I'm like mad at someone in particular, I usually spend a lot of time just like thinking about it, like being mad at first, but then thinking about it and then trying to maybe see how I did wrong in the situation and then thinking about what to say. I spend like way too much time, like probably thinking. I'd, Overthinking. I'm guilty yeah. of that too. Is it hard for you to manage a relationship? Are you, uh, is it a uh, bisexual? Do you like guys? Do you like girls? Both? I'm straight. Guys. You're straight. Yeah. So do you like, like a man's man? Do you like, because I know as a dominatrix, someone who's dominates, do you like to be dominated as well sometimes and reverse the role? Or do you always have to have the driver's seat and be- no, I like more dominant men. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's interesting that you fell into being, I feel like obviously there's more men for business wise out there that want to be, you know, abused and stepped on all these things and treated like shit and yeah. spit on and slapped. And, uh, because they never get that. These powerful men probably come to you because no one ever treats them this way and they mm-hmm. get to have this reverse. So in real life, you want a guy to take control. Yeah, I think so. And not to like, I mean, I, I like a good balance. Like I, right. I think there's a difference between being like very confident and being aggressive, right. you know, and I like more just confident, a guy who can lead, but isn't controlling. You right. Know? Um, and yeah, very balanced. That's a good way to describe it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, great. So what about now relationships? Is mm-hmm. it hard for a guy? Is it hard for a guy? You'd have to have a pretty open minded, like if you're dating a dude, to, to uh, be like, oh, yeah, sure, you go ahead and, you know, do this to this dude, even though you're not mm-hmm. meeting them. Some guys might be insecure and, yeah. and maybe, uh, you know, a little weak minded about having a girl that they if they fall in love with you or something. I don't mm-hmm. want you to do that anymore, babe. Has that ever happened? Actually, no. And I don't know if it's just because I'm in Portland and people are just more open minded. I'm sure my dating situation would be different if I were like in Alabama or something. But um, I think. I, I really feel like I've kind of found this like loophole in the adult industry because not only am I not meeting these guys, I don't get naked in my videos or anything like that. It's all like, I mean, I dress sexy, but it's all, you know, I don't um, do anything explicit. So the guys I've dated, like, it's really easy for me to compartmentalize and for them to compartmentalize it. Like this, you know, this really is my job. And, you know, it's, it's not even, I have fun with my job, but it's not anything that turns me on too. So it's really easy just to keep it separate. Yeah, because yeah. it's interesting, you know, here in L.A., like there's a certain cliche type of woman who would possibly be in the industry, in the, in the sex industry or whatever you'd want to call it. You don't you don't fit that mold. Mm. You, I think that's probably part of the allure of you as well, is mm-hmm. you are an intellectual, smart girl that looks like the pretty girl next door. You don't look like the kind of typical big fake boob, blonde, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm sure that probably helps with your clientele because you're... You're not the, the average L.A. kind of bimbo. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Do yeah. You, but don't you think that's like kind of a stereotype, too? I mean, yeah, I remember they did a study. I can't remember what it what website this was, but someone did a study where they figured out what the average porn star looks like. So they just got like, I don't know, 100,000 porn stars and just like figured out their dimensions mm-hmm. and their hair and their eye color and figured out like what was the average look. And the average look was like a brunette really? with B-size cups. Interesting. And, yeah. So it's like we always think about like Jenna Jameson or right. Stormy Daniels, but really it's like there's a lot of Sasha Grays too. That's and, true. Uh, yeah, Sasha Gray, she was sort of one of the first ones that was, uh, you actually kind of remind me, you have a similar beauty to, to her. Oh, she, thank and you. She, yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah. Um, 
I saw her once at a party and I got intimidated and I wasn't the man that I should have been. And she just gave me these eyes. She gave me these fucking eyes. It just looked right through me. And I was like, I think I was like stoned or something. And I was just like, whoa, that's Sasha. Okay. And like, I didn't pounce on it like a man should have. Uh -huh. And I missed my window of opportunity, which mm -hmm. was maybe for the better. Maybe I didn't need to, uh, be, you know, meet her. But she looked right through me and she just had this uh, powerful she, look. Yeah, well, yeah, she does have that kind of stare. Yeah. Yeah, but she's an, she's a really smart, like I've seen her in interviews and she's like a cool, smart chick. Yeah, she's intriguing. She doesn't fit the mold either. She was sort of like one of the first ones. I guess in my brain, I have this impounded, uh, this, this um, uh, permanent image of like the 90s porn star with bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's sort of like what you grew up seeing. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's just a dated thing that isn't true anymore. I saw this test that they did once where they had a girl stuck on the side of the road with a broken uh, down car. And she had brown hair and they did a, a, a percentage of how many people pulled over to help her. Mm -hmm. She put on a blonde wig and like 90% more <laughs> men pulled over to help her with the blonde wig on. Same girl. Yeah. Replace it with a man and like no one stops. <laughs> Nobody stops. I actually had that happen the other day. I saw a girl on the side of the road changing her spare tire and I was driving my RV and I was cooking fast. And I, by the time I looked and stopped and I still feel bad for not pulling over and having help. So if that... I hope that woman got her tire fixed. Oh, I wasn't sure chivalrous. I, I did, I, but my thought was, "Oh, pull over, help!" And by the time I was just gone, and I was like, "Oh man, I didn't help that woman." Mm -hmm. But she had brown hair. I'm sure someone has stopped. I've been in that situation before, and it's like five, ten minutes. Someone will stop. <laughs> yoga pants, big deal to me. Yeah. Do you find a big yoga pants audience out there? There's something about oh, yeah. yoga pants that's even there's certain things that are more interesting than just a naked body, like the right underwear or. I don't know what it is about yoga pants. It's just like a, such a simple cliche thing, but oh, like it's great though. That's like my go-to. Like if I'm doing cam that day, you know, I just wear yoga pants because guys like it and it's Why? so comfortable. What is it? I don't know. It just hugs your butt right in the way. Yeah. You know, especially like brands like Lululemon. Like they're the material. Just like it's almost like Spanx. It just kind of keeps everything in, together. And do you write? Um, obviously, you you're well read. You're a smart girl. Do you write, uh, like I checked out your website and, mm -hmm. and you write all of those, um, I guess, I don't know what the little... The descriptions? Yeah, the descriptions below each video mm -hmm. are very well written and it's like, that's, it's interesting because I remember hearing these girls talk about on this other podcast that like sometimes instead of like an image of like a guy sending them a dick pic or whatever, like, like just write something sexy that gets me going. Like mm. the fantasy of like reading something, mm -hmm. you know, gets me going more than like a picture of you holding your dick or whatever. Mm. Um, do you find that guys are attracted to your good writing too? Does that lure them in? Like, because I was reading some of it earlier I was like, Oh, she's a good writer. Like this is like, you know, it pulled me in. Well, I actually have to give credit to my editor. He writes he my description. Oh, does he? Okay. So it's actually a gay man writing it. Oh, <laughs> oh I was funny. lured in by a gay I man. Know. <laughs> oh no. I, I kind of like telling people that because they're like, oh shit. Yeah. I, I used to, and I do like writing. Um, and it sounds actually, like what, your voice. It sounds like what? Well, that's one of the reasons I hired him is like, because I can teach anyone to edit my videos, but I wanted to make sure I had someone that knew how to write. And he is good at like, if I, I bet if you read my older descriptions when I wrote them, you probably couldn't really tell much of a difference because he is really good at writing in my voice. But yeah, he's been writing them for the past five years, at least. He's very good. Give him, give yeah. him credit. Give yeah. him a high five for me. He's doing a good job. Yeah. I worry that um, people might just be jacking off to the descriptions and not buying the video. <laughs> Oh, I see. Because is that what it is? You have to buy the video because you just get a little teaser of like a photo of it. Yeah. I noticed there was a spit one. Is spitting a big thing? Like uh, guys like to be spit on. Mm -hmm. Is that so you just spit on the camera and it's yeah. like their face? Or where do they want to be spit on? Yeah, usually it's, yeah, they like me to, it's kind of annoying because I don't want to spit on my equipment, but <laughs> they usually like it if I spit like right at the camera right. and like it, I'll sometimes put like a piece of glass over the lens right. and so like it looks like it drips down their right. face. Yeah, that's, that gets guys going is like the spit, there's something about that. I remember back in the day, and I'm older, I'm 45 years old, I remember there was a time when girls would like use their teeth uh, and there'll be a thing like stop using your teeth when you're getting like a blowjob. Mm -hmm. Those days are over due to the fact that every girl can now go on their phone and watch porn and learn how to spit and do all the tricks. And the, mm -hmm. so those days of using teeth are over. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank technology because <laughs> there's no more scraped up penises out there in high school. I thought you were about to tell me that you like the teeth. No, you're <laughs> no, it was a thing where girls didn't know how to give head. And now it's like every girl is like a professional, you know, they know all the tricks. Yeah. 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 Um, what about, what are some of the other ones that what's what are some of the, I, I only scrolled through and got, saw a few so I saw the yoga pants I saw mm -hmm. the spit the foot fetish yeah, what's another one. what's another big one that guys like mm, cuckolding 
Okay, so that's okay. Explain cuckolding to your average listener. Okay, well, it's funny because like I was on this other podcast with this guy Aaron Alexander, and he was asking me because I mentioned cuckolding, and he's like, "What's that?" And I was like, "Well." Have you heard the term cuck? And he's like, oh, yeah, that's a that's a liberal man. <laughs> that's how he described it. Because, <laughs> you know, in the Internet culture, people call each other cucks. It's uh-huh. usually for, like, people on the left. Right. But a cuckold is when um, it is usually a married man who is being cheated on and the his wife is rubbing it in his face in like a humiliating sort of way. But they don't watch. They just know about it. Isn't that right? Well, it can it can go either way. It could just be that your wife is cheating on you. You're a cuckold, right. you know. Um, but how the fetish or the fantasy usually manifests is like the wife will be like fucking, you know, right in front of her husband oh, and rubbing it in. And, and they get off on thing. that. And yeah. they could masturbate. They could do whatever they want to this. Yeah. And so for what me... Kind of, I wonder where that comes from. Is that... I think uh, it's just like a lot of times our worst fears are eroticized. Interesting. You know, because I get guys that fantasize about that. I get guys that uh, have like a small penis humiliation fetish, you know, which is a big insecurity for guys. Um, what about premature ejaculation? Is that a, st- is that a thing? Yeah, I know a I've lot of men. Yeah, that, yeah, making fun so of like, guys for being quick comers or right, something like that. Right. I guess I wonder if that's like a fe- like a obviously no woman likes that. Um, and does it go by so when someone's like on? paying you for your time and, and, and paying you if they finish early that's less money for you does it go by time so you want them to last long are they like actually jacking up or is it more like they're just watching and talking and is it like a story or are some yeah. guys just going for it <laughs> I usually like the guys that are just going for it because right. it's like it gets tricky if a guy comes in cold uh-huh. and he's just like he just expects me to meet like read his mind right. and like f- you know ramp things up like you but, have to lead the dance yeah which i mean is fine but sometimes guys are really like uh you have to pull their teeth to figure out what they're even into you know right um but i don't i have them pay in uh like chunks of time ahead of time so oh, they'll see. pay for 10 minutes if they last five that's got their it. own problem got yeah. it i see uh so what to, so what's another big one that, that that like what's a fetish that our listeners might be like oh that's a thing like what are some other mm. weird ones not necessarily maybe that you do but that you've heard of out there i got one for you that i heard is really interesting mike's yeah. girlfriend told me she knows this model mm-hmm. that goes to japan and she's paid to fast for a week mm. and she fasts for a week on a certain diet and then they feed her caviar and they put her in an aquarium and these rich businessmen sit there and she shits out the caviar perfectly clean and then they eat it in front of her in the aquarium that was a That's interesting. That's fantastic. I love that. Right. <laughs> so that blew my mind. Did you have any ones like that oh, you've man. heard of, like that that would just? I'm I'm fascinated Gosh. with that kind of shit. Well, just going back to that, there's like that reminds me of there's like a weasel in Vietnam that eats um, coffee beans. I know a weasel and, in Hollywood. He's my old agent. Sorry. <laughs> they um, they eat these coffee beans and poop them out. Oh and yeah, I've had they, that. I'm yeah, done. I've well, had that. That's it's, it's like a ferret animal. I did that in Bali. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Thing is, yeah I, I tried it. It's like, but that's yeah, that's not really sexual. That's just no, an overpriced no, coffee. No. Um, damn, I feel like you really set the bar pretty high with that story. I know, right? That one's so fascinating <laughs> to me. And, and she's just like a model and does it on the side and gets paid a lot of money. My first day, she got like 20 grand to do it, all these rich guys. And they sit there and eat the caviar. That's amazing. Right? Huh. And they watch her in there like a, like a fucking mermaid. <laughs> Did she wear the fin? I don't know if she wears an outfit, but the, the, the whole thing just blew my mind. That's that some Japanese hilarious. shit. I feel, yes. so, so Japanese and German are some known to be some of the freakiest. Yeah. Is it because they're so... What do you think it is? What's going on over there? Is it because there's such an uptight culture and so strict yeah. and rigid? Because I've been to both countries and they're very organized mm-hmm. and they're very, you know, like walk on the same side streets. It, it felt very uh, rigid. Yeah, very yeah. rigid. That's my oh, best guess. That's uh, because of that, that yeah. they inside they're going nuts sexually because they don't let it out. I feel like America is pretty sexually uptight, very yeah. puritanical. I mean, yeah. You know, but at the same time, it's like there's a lot of mixed messages, you know, right. it's like we have this like fight for like, oh, should we, you know, teach kids how to use condoms? And that, for some reason, that's a conversation. And, but at the same time, every billboard has like, you know, sexualized right. images and stuff like that. So it's a lot of mixed messages in our culture. Anything where you're like, no, nah, I'm not doing that where someone hits you up to do something you're like, dude, that's too much. Like maybe something that's just like violent or like something that's just like, no, nah, that's just I'm not into that one, dude. And. Yeah, has that happened? Yeah, I've had, you get guys that ask you to, um, like, crush live animals. Like, they want you to, like, step on mice and frogs and stuff like that. And Those are serial killers. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. I didn't really think about it that much. That's where it starts. And I actually, I did, 
sort of a video like that. I didn't kill any live animals, but when I went to Thailand, you. you know, they have, they sell the, the bugs on the street. Have you mm. seen those? The, the stands? The bugs? Yeah. Like to eat? Yeah. They fry up like oh, crickets yeah, that, and yeah, stuff like one. that. I one, yeah. So I just, I bought a bunch of crickets and dragonflies and whatever. And I just did a video of me eating them and just making it like really clear, like, you know, crushing them in my uh-huh. teeth and stuff like that. And I actually got in trouble with um, the website that I sell my videos off of because they're like, oh, that was we- a fucking insect. Well, that was the thing. They're like, well, we don't allow crushing of animals. Oh. And I'm like, well, is it really an animal though? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of argued it and, and they were still like, no. And I was like, well, here's the thing. Like, you Portland. Would, what if I was eating a steak, like that wouldn't be okay. Right. And he was like, well, th- that's not a steak. Those are, and I, and I explained that I like, no, I was in Thailand and these were actually prepared to eat. And then he was like, oh, okay. All right. And then I got by with that. I was fascinated with the Thailand sexual culture. They're the uh, soapies they're called. Do you know what that is? Where they, no. they have these places where you go and they have like these uh, costumes that you can like choose a prostitute and put them in a different Supergirl outfit oh, yeah. or a spider or, or a little Bo Peep. Mm-hmm. And you pick out a theme for them. There was a place called the uh, Cherry Tree, which is 13 virgins a day. Mm. 13 virgins a day, the cherry tree. That's a are real they, thing. Are they really virgins? Yeah, well, they say that. Hmm. Um, buddy of mine, rest in peace, Murph Dog, most gangster dude I ever met, he went out to Thailand and he said that he was like, because like the, there's a lot of the bo- uh, lady boys out there. Yeah. Right? And it's kind of hard to tell like who's it's really, really hard be, to tell. you know, they're all, you know, like the men and the women are similar in size and shape. Mm-hmm. And so there was this one that he said was beautiful. And he would tell the story. He said, it's okay that I'm telling it. And he said that one of them was a transgender mm-hmm. and that, you know, had, had the penis removed and became a woman. And he said, I just got it. He was all drunk. He's like, I just got to feel that shit. Let me see what it feels like. And she let him finger her. And he said it was just like this weird adapted different tiny vagina that barely went in because it wasn't a real vagina. It was just mm, like it was really he, shallow. Yeah, really shallow. Mm. And he just had to feel it. He had to see. Yeah, and I'd be curious. Thailand's on some other shit. Yeah. They're fucking it's very sexually and a lot of white guys, like a lot of Westerners go there. I actually had this happen to me in Thailand. These dads came up to like, uh, do you uh, do you want to shoot guns? And I was not really a gun guy. So I'm like, no, I'm good. They're like you uh, shoot, you know, come shoot a cow for a hundred dollars. I'm like, shoot a cow. They're like, yeah, we have different guns. You could shoot a cow. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I'm good. They're like, you could shoot man for one thousand dollars. What? Oh, no. <laughs> Found out later that they'll let you kill somebody. That they'll take out of prison and because there's crazy white motherfuckers that are like war veterans that want to kill again and they'll go let you kill someone out in a field. That was the darkest shit I ever heard. Wow. Yeah. Thailand motherfuckers. Damn. I've been to Thailand a couple of times. I never got offered that. That was a weird one. And then they got the, and then in Tokyo they have like the panty machines, Mm -hmm. obviously like that's when you see, you know. They use panties. Do you sell, do you sell used panties? And Mm -hmm. if so, how, what's that, what's the going rate? Like if someone wanted to buy your used panties that's listening to this, uh, how would they get them and how much he's going to sell them for? Do you ever have a two for one sale? No sales, no discounts. I'm not discount Dom. Um, I still sell off the same auction site I did at the beginning of my career. And lately they've been selling for between five and $700. Good for you. Yeah. What's some other items that you sell? Like Ooh, what about like hair? Things. Like yeah. anything, anything you can imagine me harvesting off my body. So I've sold wow. like use Kleenex. I, eyelash? Not eyelash. Pubes. Tampons. Um, used. Oh my God. That's yeah, incredible. Band-aids. So you have a fan base that's so obsessed with you that they want these products because it's you. Yeah, pretty much. You've created, that's an incredible, this is like such yeah. a fascinating story to me. Yeah, that's very astute too. Cause like people hear this and they're like, oh, well I have, you know, spit and hair and stuff like that. But, yeah, but it, they're not you. Yeah. I'm, I know it sounds egotistical, but no, it no, really is true. about like building up your image and like who you are and stuff like that. So that guys want that from you. Not just that, you know, where am I going to get a bottle of pee? Like, right. that's, that's not hard. So where, what's the end game? Do you see yourself maybe down the line, you know, producing other stuff, maybe working with other talent? Like mm-hmm. now you, you're learning the game. You could probably find some other chicks and be like, look, you want to make some money? Like mm-hmm. you find a cute girl that's, you know, in, in 10, 15 years, that's 20 years old and turn her on and, and like, yeah. You know, I've actually did that for a while. I had another website called Team Tease, and it was essentially me. Team or teen? Team. Okay. And um, it was me and my friend who was also 
in the same line of work and we like hired girls and taught them how to do videos and how it all works and stuff like that. Yeah. But you know what? It didn't make that much money. Like we kind of just fizzled out and it's because they weren't in desire as desirable as you. Well, it's what? not like, cause I figured like, sorry, was, I have to adjust my penis. It's not sexual harassment. <laughs> my underwear is too tight. Sorry. Um, it's not like I figured it would be like the mainstream porn industry where right. guys just want to see a fresh face. Like someone new, someone new. And with this, it's, Guys really like girls that are just really experienced and really right. get the fetishes and really know what they're doing. So we, you know, we'd hire some beautiful women and kind of teach them how to do it. But because they were maybe a little awkward or they just didn't quite get right. it, like it just didn't sell that well. Interesting. Yeah. But it is something you could see possibly doing down the line as you on the other end, maybe like. I don't like, know. I feel like end? I've done it. You know, I feel yeah. like I've done that. And, okay. You know, um, what about writing a book or something? I mean, I you got like the podcast. I feel like you would have these fat. I mean, this it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. It is really fascinating. I meet so many interesting people in this town and this business and all, I mean, and everything from the music industry to the modeling industry to the Hollywood. And your story is fascinating because oh, it's not you. something that you hear all the time. Um, and you go against almost every thing, like hanging out with you. It's just, it's funny, like the quiet, sweet, I've had girlfriends like who are quiet and sweet and very calm. And then those are the funnest ones behind closed doors. Yeah. Cause you're not like, Hey, I'm a, you know what I mean? There's something, it's like you, it's a very interesting breed. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. In a good way. That's a compliment. Yeah. What about in this me too day and age, what about like guys can't just come up and, and hit on you like they used to. Mm-hmm. Do you find that to be a bad thing or a good thing? You're obviously a feminist, I imagine. And pro, but is there a point where it's getting to be too cushioned that you, you can't have a man just be a man and be like come up and approach you without it being harassment? Yeah, I... I see what you're saying, and um, I think the Me Too movement is mostly really good. You know, the fact that, like, scumbags like Harvey Weinstein can't, you know, get away with the shit they're doing. Like, that's awesome. Right. There's and, a spectrum, I think. Yeah, and I like that women are being taken more seriously and just, you know, just bullshit that happens to women is, you know, kind of coming to light and it's not as tolerated. But at the same time, I do think there are some overreaches where people are a little too sensitive and... I think um, a lot of times uh, men's clumsiness or awkwardness comes across as, you know, harassment or assault. And I, yeah. I wish I wish people would be a little more understanding and like uh, give people the benefit of the doubt a little bit more. You know, I think people are just kind of very zero tolerance and like if, if it is if it feels creepy, it is creepy type mentality. And I think there's, you know, men and women are different and sometimes signals you know, get, get, you know, mixed up or misunderstood. And so I think we're figuring it out. I think it's kind of a pendulum swing and hopefully it'll come back to center a little bit. Yeah. I think also the cell phone, social media thing is making people not interact in real life as, as well. You know, people don't have real life game on how to talk to a woman. It's all like how to talk online. And then, (laughs) and I feel like people like Harvey Weinstein and these people that abuse their power, they probably never did very well with women before. And then all of a sudden they're given this money and power and they don't know what to do with it. And they just like abuse it. So those creepy guys set a bad example for most men. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like most of these guys that you're seeing doing that, they probably weren't getting laid in high school they probably were getting made fun of and it's like this bottled up sort of revenge i don't know does yeah. that make sense psychologically yeah, yeah that speaking. makes sense and i think we could maybe be have a little more compassion for men like there's a lot of man hating going on and it doesn't help women to do that i right. think you know if we don't if we aren't a little more compassionate about the you know the frustration and pain that men go through growing up and it just and not just men i think people i think there's just a lot of pain and in our society and our culture and there's just a lot I mean all the I feel like like all these mass shootings with these guys that are so just like pissed at chicks and there's just so much anger yeah. there's just so much hate it's just a real weird negative ugly thing that surfaced that has, has always been there but it's bubbled up lately um that's really ugly and, and it's disappointing, you it know, is. in humanity. And I don't know if it, it feels really American. Like, I don't feel like most cultures around the world are as bad as us, obviously. Mm. Like, you go to these other places, you travel around the world a lot. You got, you lived in Japan. Yeah. Um, you don't see this happening in a lot of other places. Mm. It's like, we're fucked up. Like, what's going on with us? I don't know. That's a good question. It's because this country was founded on uh, mass murder and and taking over, uh, killing the Native Americans and slavery. Yeah. And, it, and but it's not like other cult countries have you know perfect true. backgrounds. That's true. 
but that's what I'm so what is it about us is it it's just something something toxic and different here that's uh well it's a different kind of issue we have like I mean if you go to the Congo or something like that obviously there's going to be tons right. of violence and like you know d- drug lords and all sorts of horrible things but we have a particular problem of like these mass shootings that just don't happen anywhere else and yeah it's I'm not sure what that's about yeah it's strange um and do you ever get any uh, gun fetish things? <laughs> gun fetish. I had a fr- I had a friend yeah. who had a girl that he she wanted him to have sex with a gun in her mouth and everything. Oh jeez. Yeah, but Ooh. not not I don't think it was loaded or anything, but still it's I like, have a good story on that. I was um <laughs> I was working with a friend of mine. We were doing like a uh, content trade, you know. And her name is Mandy Flores and well, she, she sounds hot. Yeah. She's Anyone awesome. with the last name Flores is hot. She's hot. Um she had a custom video so funny. I had the best time doing it so this guy he bought us these toy guns and you can imagine like really like toy looking like plastic all these colors when you pulled the trigger it like lit up and made like kind of this like kind of whirring noise you know not even like a like a ray gun more than an actual gun you know and (laughs) see if i can describe these videos we had to do there are these short little like two minute segments and it would be a scenario where you know I would be gun woman one and she would be gun woman two and the cameraman was his own had his own gun and in one scenario I would maybe get her with the gun and another one she would get me and another one the cameraman would get both of us or something like that but when we shot the gun w- the person getting shot had to like shake their whole bodies mm-hmm. and like he got off on just watching us like shake Interesting. but it was so fun because we'd do it for like 30 seconds and he'd want us to say the cheesiest stuff like i'm being machine gunned and you're machine gunning me and just very corny but like we just had the best time like like there'd be one where the cameraman got us both right. and she would fall over and then i would fall over on top of her it would just be like no is this live or do you get to like <laughs> la- we laughed at this take cut let's try that again is this like a live stream thing no no it? this was a custom video okay so they're pre-recorded so you must have had some giggles and had to reshoot Tons. that a couple of times a little bit yeah, luckily that- they were short enough that like you know right it's not like we had to do some like 10 minute take right. totally deadpan but yeah, so like I think that's the closest that uh, gun fetish video yeah. I've done. That one's kind of silly. That one just makes it kind of silly and yeah. fun. Uh, who are some of the other girls out there that you work with that uh, that are worth ch- maybe for people listening to to check out besides yourself that you like to work with or that are fun or that have some other maybe do some crazy fetishes that would be interesting to hear about. Um, one of my best friends is she goes by Alexandra Snow. Yeah, Chris told me I should have her on the podcast yeah. as well. He said I should talk to you about her. Yeah, totally. She is actually um, she's a real dominatrix. She owns a dungeon. She knows so her she's shit. in person. She's t- touching the men with her high heels yes. and stepping on their dick. And doing what Balls, I do. Balls, penis with, area. Mm-hmm. And doing what I do with like videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you want to talk to just like a real dominatrix that knows her shit, that's... Set it up. Yeah. I want to talk to her. Okay. Totally. Um, so yeah, she. So it's, she's great because she's just like real classic dominatrix, but she also does the POV talking mm-hmm. humiliatrix stuff that I do. Um, so you'll never do it in person. You'll, that's where you cross the line. I mean, you do, or you don't cross the line. I've met... I've met some of my fans socially. Like mm-hmm. I've had clients for like ten years where we've really built a trust, and you and then know, you finally meet them. Yeah, we'll go out to uh, dinner or something. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, but I don't do live sessions. Like, okay. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, you'll never do. At this point, you'd know if you want to do that or not. Yeah, exactly. I've been okay, doing so. It Alexandra enough. Snow is that her name? Yeah. Okay, so she and she will step on my balls if I paid her. Totally. I'm not into that. Mm, no. No. Mm. I just got out of the ER as I told you for having <laughs> right. a, a cellulitis in my left. T- I, I, I don't care. I'll just be honest. I had a little infection uh, from an ingrown hair my left testicle i had to go to the er uh, it was it, it, a little ingrown hair turned into a whole deal so the actually maybe i need to hire her to step on my nuts it might help me maybe because they had to fucking pop that shit and, and drain it was the most painful thing i ever felt so i'm not into like testicle pain yeah some guys are into that i guess they want to is it what the fuck does that come from i have no idea yeah, there's some weird fetishes out there yeah um what else does she what does she do like the your, your typical tie me up gag mm-hmm. me whip me oh yeah she does cool like abduction fantasies Ooh. where like you set up and you have to get you know you have to get your paperwork in order so you don't get in trouble for it oh but... yeah you have to sign like a non not a non-disclosure but like an agreement yeah 
Uh, right. Especially if you get pulled over by the cops or something. Oh, but there's guys that no. like, they'll set it up where it's like, oh, you'll be at a... Kidnap me? Yeah, kidnap. <gasps> like, they'll, they'll gag so you. So she kidnaps him? Yeah, she'll, she'll a kidnap bitch. a guy, throw him in a trunk. Him, not her. Yeah, throw him in a trunk, drive him somewhere. What a little bitch. He just wants to be a desert. little bitch. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, and it's like, he signs a thing, you can beat me up. Right. Just watch the teeth. Don't knock my teeth out, but give me a couple rib shots. <laughs> right, right. Oh, my God. That's fucking incredible. Yeah, isn't that awesome? I'm trying to think. I need it. Let's come up with a fetish for me. I like the back of the knees, mm -hmm. but that's not that crazy. No. I, you know, I don't know if I'm into like being like tied up or anything like so there's cliche kind of fetishes. I need to come up with a good one. We'll think of something for me. Mm. Maybe we'll come up at Burning Man. That's where so many good ideas happen. That's very true. We're going to go at Burning Man. You asked me to stay with you at the orgy d tent. Yeah, orgy, orgy dome. dome. I passed. Um, and I'm staying at um, Mimosa Sunrise, which will be kind of neighbors, are we? Um, we're not too far apart. Okay, yeah. I'll find you. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll find the Orgy Dome. Don't you worry. All right. Or, and, <laughs> and I think I drove by the Orgy Dome and saw it last time. I didn't go in, but I saw it. Yeah, I haven't gone in either. I'm a little nervous. Oh, so yeah. you're staying at a camp that you've never been to. No. And you know some of the people there? Um, well, my friend, I just uh, Snow, who I just talked about, I'm camping with her. Oh, cool. And she can, got connected with them. And so, yeah, she knows some people there. And will you be whipped? Whippet woman again? Yeah. That was the best. So. That's when you won me over. So <laughs> if anyone out there knows about nitrous oxide, there's the Whippet canister box and there's a girl on it. It looks like a 1950s Susie Homemaker Baker. Mm -hmm. And it's like a green with and blue go -go outfit. Boots. Yeah. yeah. And you made the outfit yeah. and had a fucking holster with the Whippets. And I was like, <laughs> and I remember me and you went to that like quiet thing at Al Playa Alchemist and it was like this spiritual thing and we were joking around and pretending <laughs> if we had. <laughs> it was like, everyone, please be quiet. We're like, <laughs> Um, that was a good laugh. And then I remember we watched like the train crash yes. and we're just in the cracking them in the corner. Uh, As you do. we'll be doing that again this year. Hell yeah. Um, so, so you're staying at the orgy dome. I'll be staying at it. I'm going to find you. I'm going to come by the, or now if I go visit you, does that mean I have to orgy? I've never orgy. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Okay. You've never that, orgy before. I've never orgy before. No. And I've had a couple threes, some stuff like that, but I've never been in like a full on, or, like crazy orgy. Didn't you tell me one time you had sex with seven different women, but some of them were on their phones. It was six. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not crazy. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I wouldn't consider that an orgy. I mean, isn't an orgy like multiple men and women? Yeah, I guess so. I think, well, I think it's just a numbers. Anything more than like four. Is, it, oh, is that it? I feel like. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if there's like an official definition. A 4G. A 4G. Yeah, I got to figure this out. Just like, like the, what's the technical term for like a soiree is like under 10 people or a shindig. Like I was looking that up recently. Like what exactly is the difference? I wonder what an orgy technically would be. I don't know. Yeah, I want to find out. So I, I don't imagine like in people's heads, like, oh, Burning Man's one big orgy, but it really isn't. No. It's a city. And within that city, there's so many different things happening. Yeah. There is jujitsu class, mm -hmm. yoga, jazz club, which we went to. Yeah, I love the jazz club. You and I had a great night. We went to, uh, I'm going to just give them a little cliff notes of our night. So me and you got to know each other, Burning Man. We stayed next to each other. And me and you and Kyle Tierman went out one night. Just no plans are the best plans. Mm -hmm. And the three of us rolled out. And three is the magic number, always, yeah. I think. The three of us rolled out. And we had no plan. And we went to the temple. Mm -hmm. when, remember, we couldn't find our bikes for an hour. Yes. So guess what I did this year? I just went and got a six foot LED antenna Ooh. with the remote control. I got one of those too. So I won't, that because of that night, I don't want to lose my bike again. Yeah. So I got the antenna. So, cause we literally walked around the temple for an hour to yeah. find our bikes. We yeah. could not find them. And we did the temple. We did a jazz club. Mm -hmm. I did stand up comedy in a bad joke. Oh tent. yeah. The, the janky. Town. Yeah. I got to go back there. That was fun. Yeah. That was fun. I got some uh, courtesy chuckles. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, -huh. uh, what else did we do that night? We just kind of just had a mellow and it was like a Friday night, like mm -hmm. the big night. And we yeah. went mellow. Yeah. it's. I think that's a good way to go is to kind of do all your crazy partying early and then... Um, yeah, because there's the weekend warriors that come yeah, and just gets for the burn little, and it gets a little, yeah, a little gets crazy. A little aggressive. And yeah, it's nicer when there's less people, I think. But, that, but we went out on a crazy night, but we kind of avoided the madness. Yeah. I noticed that when I got there... After, since it was my first time going after like three or four days of being there, by the time everyone came in, like 30,000 more people come in on the weekend, I felt this weird thing where I'm like, oh, who are all these people coming to my town? Like it was like my thing. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what the fuck is my first time here? What am I Tourists. Talking? Yeah. And fucking weekend warriors. Uh, and what else did we do that night? We cruised around. We went and saw the violin band. Yeah. Well, that was a really fun night. That was awesome. Yeah, we had it was a great like time. This, it was like an art car that was. I think they. I think it's called the the front porch or something. Yeah, that was, was art it. car. That was yeah, it. it's like it looks just like the front porch. Yeah. And this guy had like this electric violin and 
so cool. He's really talented. And I remember at one point you're like, we can either go to, I remember Kyle said, we can either go to the sliding sheep uh, where you oh, yeah, slide the in the gate. The, what's it called? The Boz. Explain that. So it's an art car um, designed by this camp of all like gay men. And it's a big sheep and it's called the Boz, like a ba. And you climb into the sheep uh, up its backside and slide down its butthole to enter it. Hmm. It's the coolest art car. It's probably my I favorite. I didn't do that one. That was That's fun. I think... I said yes to everything except I didn't do that. Oh. And we went to, I think instead we went to the temple. I remember it was like the cross. Let's go there. Let's go to the temple. We yeah. went to the temple mm-hmm. and there was that weird guy running around naked, like yeah, a little fairy guy. dust guy. <laughs> and he kept coming up to Kyle. He's like, he's like, how many burns you been to? Yeah. And Kyle's like, this is my 15th. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I mistook you for a frat guy. There's so many frat people here now. Yeah. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have judged you. And was butt naked running around that <laughs> motherfucker. Gave him a lot of hugs. Yeah, with his <laughs> dick out. There was a lot of this weird hierarchy within Burning Man. Like, how many burns have you been to? It's yeah. kind of this thing. So this year, I'm going to lie mm-hmm. and say I've been to 47 burns <laughs> or something. Just be like, because does it really, you know what I mean? People want to, oh, how many you been to four? I've been to seven. It's kind of like this weird, yeah, one up you know, thing. one up thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have a good time. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm excited too. And it's getting close. It's like, I don't know when this will air. By the time this airs, it may have already happened. Um, I'm going by myself again. Mm-hmm. I like to go solo. Uh, I'm going to bring my mom one year. She wants to check it oh, out. Yeah, yeah I'm going to bring her for, I don't think she can handle a whole week, but I'll bring her for like a Monday, Tuesday, early couple of days, daytime show around. Yeah, she, she might want to see stay it. after she a might. couple days. She might. She's 74 years old. I don't know if she oh, can, okay. you know. Yeah. Uh, but that was what I, that one of the things I tripped on is there was so many young kids and old people there. Yeah. It was like, I, I was just so wrong about what the fuck it was. People, yeah, people think, like I have friends that are, you know, I don't know, late 30s, early 40s, and they're like, oh, I'm too old for Burning Man. I'm like, no, no you're the average age, yeah. actually. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's uh, there is no... There's really no demographic. It's anything and everything. Mm-hmm. People let their freak flag fly, and it is fucking awesome. My first day there, I went to, because I was dressed kind of like I didn't have the right outfit, and Kyle's like, we need to go get you an outfit. So we went to like the uh, thrift store with the free clothes. Yeah. And we're standing in line waiting for it to open, and I see this over, uh, zip, this heavy set guy, mm-hmm. white male, took his clothes off, butt naked, and he had no penis. He was mid trans, I guess. Okay. Okay, So he had removed his penis. Mm -hmm. He had no penis and he just sauntered into the store and picked out an outfit. And I looked at Kyle. I said, did you see that? That dude had no dick. And he goes, yeah, welcome to Burning Man. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Good for her. her, Uh, Yeah, yeah. I was. That was my first day. (laughs) And uh, it did not disappoint. I didn't see any more no dicks, but it was definitely (laughs) the best people watching you could ever imagine on the planet. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. People are just so free. I mean, the fact, you know. They're even penis free. I know. (laughs) Well, you know what? We're about at an hour. I thank you for your time. Um, I could pick your brain all day long. We'll do your podcast next and you could pick my weird brain a little bit. And if people want to find you, where do they go to either subscribe or Instagram or all that good stuff? Yeah. Anywhere you want to find me, it's under C.R. Lynch. C.E.A.R.A.L.Y.N.C.H. Great. Thank you so much for your time and keep doing what you do. And um, I might order a cup of pee one day if I'm feeling lonely. (laughs) Good. Well, I really have to pee right now. Okay, let's go do it. All right. Let's go. All right, thank you. <laughs> ah, I love this podcast. Everybody be sure to go check out her movie called Use Me. I haven't seen it yet. I got to get a copy of it or to go check it out myself. I wish I could tell you what I thought of it, but I haven't seen it yet. But go check out her movie Use Me. She's such an interesting, smart, intellectual, beautiful, sexual woman. And we support that on Nervous Rex. And I love meeting all these. I mean, I'm meeting everybody on this show. I'm meeting everyone from a humiliatrix to a movie star to surfers, skater. Wait, have I had any surfers on? I feel like, oh, yeah, Kyle Tierman, who's also friends with her. Um, anyway, man, I, well, no, I can't say man because there's women listening to and now a gender specific politically correctness. I can't say either. So, hey, y'all. Actually, I can't say y'all either because that's racist to Southern people. So, hey, everybody. Oh, no, I can't say everybody because not everyone has a body. Uh, I'm just kidding. Everybody out there, <laughs> everybody out there, you guys enjoy the rest of your day, evening, whatever the fuck you're doing. Go suck your own dick. I love you. Now, 
And if there's one thing that I know, there's hot girls everywhere I go. I ain't in the fashion world, but I'm into fashion girls. Lots of cash and smashing girls in the back of a Magnum PI whip. Big butt, small waist, long legs, fine face. You know what I say? So what? I get laid. Red alert, red alert. See that girl in the tight skirt. She a model that never works, but she looks so good, make me go berserk. LA girls, they don't dress like New York girls. They don't talk like London girls. They don't act like French girls. What's up, Miami girls? What's up, my Philly girls? And all my Italian girls. Girls, girls, girls. I've been all around the world. Big city titty, small town girl. Same dirt, you so nasty. Why they lick it in between my ass cheeks? I parked the town car. So many girls got out, look like a crown car. Gather round, y'all. I'm teaching the class on how to get ass. Nice lips, good kisser. Went down on my humdinger. Delicious, delist. It's motherfucking dirt nasty bitches. Sit vicious, bubblicious. I need a miss. Just to do my dishes Yo kids, this is non-fiction That's your motherfucking moms in the kitchen LA girls They don't dress like New York girls They don't talk like London girls They don't act like French girls What's up Miami girls What's up my Philly girls And all my Italian girls Look so good, make me go berserk Look so good, make me go berserk Look so good, make me go berserk Motherfucking Mickey F. Long. I've been all around, city to city, making up the fine young lady scream Mickey. Mickey. Daddy Long Dick, all up in your kidney, on some bond shit. Double O sixty nine, time after time, like Sydney Lopper. When I rock it, disappear like Jimmy Hopper. I ain't Johnny Drama, girls, girls, but I ain't the Dalai Lama. LA girls, they don't dress like New York girls. They don't talk like London girls. They don't. So good, so look so good, so look so good, make me go bizarre. LA girls, they don't dress like New York girls, they don't talk like London girls, they don't act like French girls. Girls, girls, girls.